Howdy. I heard you wanted to learn how railroad signals work. Well, you've come to the right place. In this quick little crash course, we'll teach you how to read and understand the most common North American railroad signals so you can identify when a train might be coming near you. The most common signal types nowadays are these vertical color light signals, which are the ones we will be focusing on in this video. So, first things first, you gotta determine if the area that you're in has automatic block signaling or CTC controlled signaling. This should be easy to determine even by the untrained eye. Automatic block signaling will always have a color displayed no matter if a train is 10 minutes away or 5 hours away. CTC controlled signaling on the other hand may go dark or have no lights displayed at a given time. Whether the section is automatic or CTC controlled varies by both location and railroad, so it'll be important to go out and check what your location is. Let's begin with automatic block signaling. This one is a little bit more difficult to determine exactly when a train might be coming, due to it having a natural resting state signal at all times. And this can vary between railroads whether the natural resting state is green or red. Let's move over to ATCS for an example of this. We can take this section here and only focus on it between mile marker 442 and 405. Let's say there's a train starting right here and the natural state of the signals are green. So this is all lined up green. As the train begins to move, it'll start tripping the signals and as, as it goes past it and turn them to red. As it moves on, it continues to trip signals and turn them red. Once the train is out of the block that the signal covers, it'll turn back to green. So as the train keeps moving on, it does this snake-like pattern of turning the signals it passes red, and then once it gets far enough away, it'll turn those signals back to green due to it being a green natural state. Now is a good time to talk about signal blocks and what they are. You can see here every time I click a signal, a little section of track will change color. These are blocks, or basically the area of track in between two sets of signals. So this signal block goes from mile marker 432.5 to 423. In almost all cases, only one train can occupy a block at a given time. This will be important to understand as we get to talk about the different colors of signals coming up later in the video. But you can basically think of a block as a section of track. Now let's move on to CTC controlled signals. This is the one where the natural state of the signal is often dark or shut off. So as an example, let's say there is a train right here in this siding moving this way. Before it starts moving, the dispatcher would give the signal to go green. And it depends on how far out they will give the signal depending on volume and other traffic. But they will only give a certain amount of signals and then once the train passes the first signal it'll turn that block red until the train leaves that block entirely. And then once the train leaves the block entirely that signal will once again go dark until the dispatcher goes back and turns it on. Now, let's learn to read what exactly those signal colors mean, regardless of which type of signaling usage it is. The reference I will be using here is the Union Pacific signaling system. Different railroads may vary, but generally these are the agreed upon signals. Now, our first one here is the best one to see. Usually it means a train is well on its way. It means clear, and there's a lot of different signal combinations it could be, so, if you see any of these on your railroad, you're in for luck. The next most common signal is the approach signal. Most commonly a yellow light, but with a lot of different varieties depending on the signal structure. What this means is be prepared to stop at the next signal that you see. The last of the top three most common signals is, of course, our red light stop sign. Some of the less common but still useful signals to know First up, we have the advanced approach, which is most commonly a single yellow flashing light. This means be prepared to stop at the second signal that you encounter. Now here are some confusing ones. These occur right before a switch, or when the track splits. This one is a diverging clear, 
with a red and green. And it might be counterintuitive to those who don't know, but this means full speed ahead, but you're diverging onto the alternate track. Similarly, this is the approach diverging, which means proceed onto the diverging track, but be prepared to stop at the next signal. There are still many other types of signaling color combinations that can occur, but the ones that we've talked about so far are the most common, and I will link the page I used for the Union Pacific Railroad signaling rules in the description if you want to check out all of their different options that they have. Now you've got what it takes to be able to read those trackside signals and know when a train might be coming past you. Whether you're a past, present, or future rail fan, I hope you were able to learn something from this video. Feel free to share the knowledge with others, whether they're rail fans or not. It can be good general knowledge to know when a train might be coming. I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you all real soon.